Hasavanta Sole Namo Hasavina Taku Mahate Uriya Hasamba Taku Matave Isaiah 57 verse 15 Isaiah 57 verse 15 And so the Bible says For thus saith the high and lofty one That inhabited eternity Whose name is holy He says I dwell in high and holy place Only with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit. He says, I dwell on a high and lofty place. Only with him who is of a humble heart and a contrite spirit. Only with him who is of a humble heart and a contrite spirit. The Lord said, a broken and a contrite heart, I, the Lord, will not despise. So tonight, if you want to stay where the Lord is, I beg you, be broken. I beg you, be broken. I beg you, be humble. Your place is where eternity is. Be broken, be humble. So tonight, can you cry to the Lord and say, Oh God, I come. Break me and help me to be where you are. Break me and help me to be where you are. Oh, 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 oh. He says, I dwell. I dwell with the one who is of a broken and a contrite spirit. He says, I dwell. Can you cry out to the Lord? You might be a prayer warrior. You might be a fasting giant. You might be a study warrior. But if you're not broken, if your heart is not broken, if your heart is not broken, he says, I dwell. I dwell with only that person who is humble and who is broken. A broken and a contrite spirit, he says, I, I, the Lord, will not despise. Brother, sister, please be broken. Be broken. It is not of you to be. It is of him to make you. Can you cry unto the Lord? Can you cry unto him? He is open for only those who are broken. He is open for only those whose spirit are so contrite. He is open for only those who yearn for his love. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. Can you cry to the Lord? Can you cry? I know you want to be a man of God. I know you want to be a revivalist. But I tell you, brother and sister, if you are not broken, the Lord has nothing to do with you. Can you cry? Can you cry? Can you cry? Oh, say hello, my Kubena. Good to meet you, Kubena. Sabor. You tell me, oh, say no, na Kube yo kabu. Asavi na oh, say lo kabati na ayo. Hello, so kabu na hello, tu ba. Can you cry? Don't the Lord break you? Let the maker break. Let the build a build 
voice of my love He is beckoning on me To that holy place Oh, I hear the sound of my love He's calling unto me, oh To that secret place Ha sobe na tu bebe kama ha sobe na tu la baba eba 
Alléluia. 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 Amen. God is set to change somebody's destiny. God is set to turn somebody's story around. Above all, God is set to bring somebody into a realization of their divine ordination. It is good that we have begun by pressing and gaining ascendancy because this is the only posture by which we can touch the things God has in store for us this night. If you have prayed diligently, congratulations because your life is about to change. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever you are, in the next 30 seconds, just ask the Lord, encounter my life. Encounter my life, oh God. Encounter my life. persons by your side, just shake hands with them, welcome them to God's presence. I want you to take one minute before we take flight. I want you to identify something in your life that must give way this night. I want you to identify something in your life that you will not leave this hall with. I want you to identify something in your life that you will part ways with. You will wave bye-bye to after this meeting. This is the posture we must take. I want you to identify something in your life that today will be the last time you experienced it. Are you ready? Maybe you write it down. Be intentional. If you don't have the writing material, just set your heart on that course. take you to impossible places tonight it will bring your feet to a place where your ancestors never dreamed about he will plant you as a tree that will bring shade shade for your bloodline only the holy ghost spirit lead Can you abandon, can you abandon your own intellect, abandon your logic, abandon your plan and ask for this great inspiration? Holy Ghost, lead me. Take me deeper. Savior, my 
Why are they in this confusion? Because they walk on in darkness. There is such an arrangement, such an economy, such an atmosphere called darkness that it's, it's, it is so potent that when you walk inside it, all the foundations that pertains to your ordination, everything that pertains to God's expectation and demand for your life, you are going to walk out of course. Your destiny will be totally out of course because if you journey in darkness, the sense of divine direction will be far from you. And man's biggest problem is a lack of divine direction. You know, man, man, man labors. Man works hard. Man tries. The Bible said it is vain. It is vain to wake up early and then sleep late at night. You did not rest. Only to now eat the bread of sorrow. This is many people's storyline. They, they, they don't remember being lazy. Yet the dividends of hard work cannot be seen in their vessel. There are spirits that are responsible for consuming chunk of years out of people's lives. To make you continue to work. Continue to labor. People always know you as a hard working person. But any day they are looking for a dividend of hard work. There are spirits that want to make your whole life a game. They are scattered across different families. Scattered across different political zones. Scattered across various churches. There are spirits that are responsible for misdirecting people. So that with your passion for God, a spirit capitalizes on that divine passion and then uses it to push you into an error. I was teaching these things. I was telling them this morning, in worry listen look at me there is a way you love God and your love for God can become an arrangement spirits can exploit they know you love God too much then you look at something in God's house about to get out of place you use that love and follow that love and try to hold the ark that wanted to fall your real motive was good but in the process of doing good you have violated an ordinance that God cannot turn his back on. Because it is only the priest that is permitted to touch that ark. You with your good motive, even your love for God can be capitalized on. Man's biggest challenge is divine direction. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. I say unto you, ye are gods but listen although you are god because darkness has enshrouded everything that pertains to our expression it has reduced us into men why do gods die like men because they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness in genesis chapter 1 the Bible says in the beginning was the word. 
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, he says, and the earth was without form and void. And, come on, I thought we were reading together. And what? Come on, say it like you mean it. And was upon what? So, there was a portion of time, a period in history, a time in the calendar of the annals of history where darkness gained so much relevance that it was the face of the deep. Meaning, if you want to enter the earth, the first thing you will have to interact with is the thing that has become the face. Have you seen when they say somebody is the face of castle? It means that there was a beauty pageant that was organized and on the strength of that selection, they picked out somebody in their opinion that best communicates their concept of beauty and that person becomes the face of castle. Amen. Now that person becomes an ambassador representing Kasu as long as beauty is concerned. When darkness became the face of the deep, it means the government of rebellion had prospered so much that before you can enter this space, the first ambassador you will relate with one on one is darkness. And since we have discerned that the state of the world is darkness. From time to time, if God wants to help a people, if God wants to help a man, he will give him light. But that light he gives to him is not for him alone. Because the light that is given to you can become an illumination to the people whose destinies are tied to you. Because the current state of the world is darkness. In case you don't understand what I'm sharing, in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, the Bible says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And see, this darkness they speak about, they say it is still very, very intentional about covering the earth. It, is, it has not changed its mind about dominating the earth. So the state of the earth is darkness. Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And when this darkness begins to cover the earth, they know that they have seen a strange formula that God deployed as a way to counteract this program of darkness. They've seen that God has decided to cause something to become a resistance to this policy of darkness that it begins to ignite men as lights, as fire. Let me share something with you that will bless you this night. In the context of the historical timeline when scripture was written, they never understood anything as light except fire. Their idea of light was fire. If David ever said light, he was talking about a naked flame because all the, the technology that was available for them as at that time, if you go even to a palace as noble as that particular structure is, their source of light is fire. So they have these torches that they put in different strategic regions of the palace just to create illumination. So when they look for light in the olden days, what they go for is fire. Their source of light is fire. Actually, if you did not miss your geography class, the sun, as bright as it is, is actually fire. It's a combustion of gases. That's what is going on there. It is fire that is giving light to the whole of our, our solar system. It is fire that is our light. Please, I want you to whisper something to yourself. Light is fire. Hey, I say whisper, it. tell yourself again, light is fire. You know, it means that if you want to understand this concept of light and you go and read throughout the account of scripture, when a person wants to look for something in darkness, they talked about a candle. They talked about a lamp. They talked about a torch. No, nobody ever knew that they would invent a bulb. In fact, the, the, that, that globe, that round globe that you see, is, is still combustion happening inside. The reason for that light is still combustion. So anywhere you see light, light is only a presence of something else. Light itself is a product of fire. It is fire that brings light. You will bear in mind that as soon as the whole work of reconciliation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was completed, 
there was something very profound that took place. The veil to the Holy of Holies was torn. Meaning the presence of God that was protected by that arrangement had shifted from that temple built with bricks and clay. That present had lifted and he had gone to a new temple. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So God no longer dwells in a building built with bricks and clay, but your heart, your spirit has become the place where he tabernacles. The new Holy of Holies is your spirit. But there is a demand. As regarding the temple, there is a demand. In Leviticus he says, the fire, if it is a temple, as long as it is a temple, just, just in case you were never a temple and you were going to a temple, a physical building, you will see that there was one fire there that never goes off. They say, keep it burning. The, it, is, it is a law, a requirement. The fire must never what? Somebody will walk out of this place with divine direction. You will just know. You know, when Satan wants to mess your life up, he enshrouds you with darkness. You will not know you are under the, uh, the, 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 the corrupting power of darkness until you begin to take a step. And after two years, you re regret your action. And when you regret, most of the time, we are not humble enough to come and own up that I was wrong. But you have wasted two years out of your life. There are people that will take a path, journey on that path for 20 years, only to stay at one point and say, I missed it. I missed it. There is only one way to journey accurately. You need light. But light itself is not what you receive. Anywhere there is light is because fire was burning. Show me a man that has the light of God upon his head. I will show you a man on fire. I will show you an altar that cannot be quenched. Show me a man that Satan cannot peg any sin on. I will show you a man who is constantly burning. Because actually, the, the, the corruption of the world has shaped the world. So the whole world lies in wickedness and the darkness has covered the earth. And you, you are in the earth. So it means every day you will be in contact with darkness. But there is only one thing that has capacity enough to repel the influences of darkness. He says, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So if you don't have fire, you don't have light. And without light, you cannot journey through darkness. The problem with what I'm sharing now is that you can't use anybody's light. Thy word, it says, is a lamp unto my own. It's not our, my. Can you, can you tell yourself, my? Hey, go without that word and you will understand why that, that same scripture you are quoting. You are quoting, another person is quoting it and the result is different because it is a lamp unto my feet. And a light to my path. Spirit lead me I don't want to miss it too. This is The things I'm sharing with you They are a body They are a body It's not, it's not a salmon Take me deeper Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Very quickly. Hi. Listen, I'm seeing something right now and it's exciting me. I'm seeing from people's head as though they are igniting fire. I, you, know the way, you know the way a candle is? The way a man lights a candle. I'm seeing that something that was without flame was catching flame. I'm seeing it. This is what this atmosphere is doing in the destiny of people. Leviticus 6, very quickly. Let's read together. Everybody is projected. One, two, go. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. 
it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it where did you remember when I was sharing with you on Tuesday that win your battles daily hi they say if it is the priest and his priestly duties he will need to come to that altar every morning every morning every morning he will come and add firewood add wood add wood you know why the strength of your fire it is always known to decline when you take a 24 hour cycle so it is your own duty to check it again remove ashes hi don't be deceived the fact that you are born in today it does not threaten any spirit they know that time itself can quench your fire you can just you you can just think that you are a colossus now because you seem to be born in they know that we don't need you to live in sin we just need you to stay away from your altar for some time you will be shocked what you will become have you seen have you seen a a, a, a burning fire before it, it can be blazing with glory and then a time comes the strength of the fire begins to weaken any very skilled woman who has known the art of building fire what they do is that they use a fan begin to strengthen that fire again by what air that air in that context is a fresh supply of the spirit holy ghost my passion is dying i don't feel like reading your word again ah your fire is going down you plan that you will fast and for some reason the interest is beginning this is the thing you started the thing that that kept you burning suddenly those things are no longer attractive to you your fire is going down you will need the wind a fresh supply of the wind you know what if you are with me please say amen, amen. it is in that season you will need to check the arrangement quickly because there can be a pile of ashes that is already causing a hindrance to how effective your fire can burn. Guess what your ashes is? Your ashes are your results and your victories. There are the various great and mighty things God has wrought through your life. They can become a reason why your fire died. Because you will say, my soul, relax, sit and eat. You don't know yet that the way this thing came is the only way to be sustained the day they deceive you by saying among men they have not arisen anyone like you then you begin to write books you want to advise the body while, while you are consumed in your result, your fire will start dying you see this fire business it demands that every day you go and build it again the fire must never go out let me give you one illustration try try I know it will be hard try to imagine what I want to paint in your heart imagine darkness like a region and imagine creatures of wicked intent and strange inclination holding all kinds of wicked ammunition and weapon and imagine you holding light and your light is shining around your feet and the only reason why they cannot touch you is because of the light that is around you. Imagine when the light around you begins to die. Imagine how close they begin to come. Now, imagine that as you own that light, anybody who is under affliction, where would they be running to us? You. Actually, the secret of influence is to born. Born, born. See, ah, who, who was that Petrarch? He says, I set myself on fire and men gathered to watch me born was John Wesley because this man knew that it is not publicity it's not poster it's not it's not by putting a clip on the internet if you don't have fire you will be a, a noisy simba burn when you begin to burn anybody that Satan had put under captivity he hey, do you know that if we off all the light in this hall and everywhere becomes dark and I light one small candle there Although the candle is small, immediately I will become the center of attention. Because darkness has limited everybody except me. I have one small light. 
There are some of you here, you don't know your greatest opportunity. You are seeing how filthy, how dirty, how corrupt, how ungodly the world is becoming. It is the opportunity for light to shine. The, the people who sell torch, have, have you seen them with their wheelbarrow in television? They, they walk in the night. Because they know that the time where this product will sell is when the challenge the product was designed to solve is on ground. So when people are challenged by darkness, a man carries his torch and he's walking. In the afternoon, you will not know you need torch until you now realize that your whole house is enshrouded with darkness and this is the only thing you need now, the light. I have good news for somebody. The more the situation around your family, around your region, around your state, around your country, the more it's becoming darker and darker, it is actually a greatest opportunity for the songs of light to emerge. Do you know why you don't see the stars in the afternoon? Eh? You will not answer me. You know why you don't see stars in the afternoon? The stars never moved. They were always there. The reason why you didn't see them in the afternoon is because a, a, a light that was brighter than their own was shining. And so the moment that light shifts and goes away, then you now begin to appreciate the stars. They have always been there. But it takes darkness to reveal them. In this context, Jesus is a typology of that son. And Jesus says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Because he knows that he will not be in the world forever. When he was about to step out, he looked at us and said, Yeah, you now, you are the light of the world. You, you now take this button. It's like the sun stepping away and allowing the stars to shine. Now, among stars, there are different glories. There is a way you would, you would born as a star. Because we, we are all sons of Elohim. Our, our, our real origin, we came from a pure seed. We came from a seed of maximum quality. When you begin to shine, one of the first places your light will touch first is your, your Jerusalem, your family, your immediate environment. And they'll start calling you names. Titles you did not give yourself. It is your light that has commanded those titles. And just in case you caught up by yourself and bestowed a title upon your, your shoulder. And you don't know that men don't give themselves titles. It is your light that commands your salutation. So you gave yourself a title, wrote a name of a ministry, go and put your banner somewhere, and then you are wondering why nobody is coming. Nobody. It's because you named yourself outside light. And light say, I am the only one that will name you. So let's go back again. Aye. There's a sister in the middle row. You have been encumbered by a lack of divine direction. You have taken many wrong steps. You have lost time, lost years. And now the hand of the Lord is coming upon you and is setting a fire upon your head to give illumination, illumination to your feet, the place you now tread. You have entered wrong relationships that have wasted years out of your life. You have put your money in businesses, businesses that had, had nothing to do with you, but you went into it because of lack of divine direction. And even as I'm speaking now, you are currently heartbroken. Your heart is truly, truly disappointed because of a weight, a weight you cannot seem to cast away from your shoulders. Now by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release you into a new season of divine direction. I thank you, Father, because you are merciful. I thank you because you hear us. I thank you because you are not man and you cannot lie. I set that destiny on fire now. On fire. Divine fire upon you now. It's not just that one. When God speaks to one, he speaks to all. I release that fire upon everybody here. 
upon everybody here that fire comes upon you the fire the fire that causes for divine direction the fire that helps you out of mistakes the fire that saves you the stress of trial and error the fire that makes for accuracy upon you now I'm seeing people sharing fire. I'm seeing people sharing fire. I'm seeing people sharing the, the way the way you can carry fire from another person's space. That's what I see happening in the hall. There is a transfer. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. establish that the whole world is shaped, dominated, influenced and corrupted by darkness. Since you now know that the state of the world is darkness, what then is the lot of the believer? What then is our disposition? Let me show you a scripture very quickly. In Luke chapter 12 verse 49, you will see something quite mind-blowing. And this was what Jesus summarize the purpose of his coming into the earth for everybody let's read together one two go I am come to send fire on the earth and what will I if it be already kindled Jesus says I came to set fire the mission is to set fire what will I do if I meet it already kindled so people are burning with fake fire. Fake fire. Fake fire. You look like you are burning, but the fire is not, is not consecrating you. The fire is only zeal. The fire is only a hypocritic arrangement. So that people will look at you and say, wow. The fire is only for length of skirts. It's only for long white robes. The fire is only for appearance. The fire is only for what people think. The fire is not genuine. It, it cannot, it cannot bet in nature because actually it's not fire. And be no marvel. For Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. What did I tell you light is? Light is the result of fire. But Satan is not burning, but he is presenting himself like light. There is a falsehood, a falsehood that wants to come and camouflage, masquerade as though divine fire is burning on their head. There is a league of a great company of preachers released into an era and the Bible prophesied they are coming. He says, in the last days, false prophets shall what? You see, it's not, you are not the only one that arise because when the Bible says arise and shine, eh? if you don't arise, there are, all, there are other camp of people too who, who arise. Hi! Some of them when you look at their cathedral, you will see more than a million people, a million helpless, innocent people because they have not seen any authentic light. They have to follow the false light. Don't blame people. Don't talk people down. If your light is burning bright enough, people would have seen what the true gospel is. You say, they are wrong. These people are wrong. This one is wrong. You who is right, why are you not burning bright enough? In fact, John Wesley said, I set myself on fire because fire has a capacity of attracting the attention of men. You know, the easiest way to bring constructive criticism is to teach what is true. That time you are using to say this thing is wrong. Leave, don't waste that time. Use that time to be teaching what is the truth then. So allow people to see wrong and truth. Let them choose what they want.
This is Satan's agenda. He makes that you would face disappointment here, face challenges here, face delay here. Then he comes to show you a, a Jesus with a Ghana must go of money. Come, come to me, come to me. All you who have been insulted, everybody that have gone through insult and rainy, come. There is a God that wants to turn your resources around. And you didn't come to your savior. You only came to an ATM machine. It's a false fire that is burning. That fire does not have capacity to keep you under the corridor of consecration. Because the moment things just go sour, you will realize you don't have backbone in this kingdom. These are the people that put their hand to the plow and at the slightest disappointment, they turn their back and say God has disappointed them because they never knew God from the beginning. It was a false fire that came upon them. This is why Satan needs crusades to continue to go on because all he wants is to bring more people under fake fire so that that fire has no capacity of helping them journey through darkness. Can I share something with you? Please, can I share something with you? I hope you know that the moon also have light. Do you realize that when the sun goes away, a stranger comes and, and pretend like he too is a lord. He's called the moon. And he does not burn. He does not burn. Because his own light is not his own. He is only reflecting the light of the sun. He is an imposter. He waits until darkness comes. And then he now comes around as though he is a source of light. But this thing called the moon is an eternal message that if you don't walk in the day, the night is coming when no man can walk. Because in Genesis, I believe chapter 2, the Bible says, and God made two great lights. One to rule the day, the, the, the greater to rule the day and the lesser to rule the night. So the moon is also going to rule. The sun will rule. The sun will rule the day. The moon will rule the night. The only thing you can choose is either you want to be a child of the day or a child of the night. But when you choose where you want to belong, you cannot choose your ruler. Your ruler is already chosen. The first, the first thing divine fire should do for you, he will show you the savior, just the savior. He has shown you the worthlessness of your soul. He has shown you the corruption and the defilement that darkness has done upon you. He has shown you how condemned you are and he has shown you there is only one way, the savior. Not too many people have met the savior. We have met ATM, we have met miracle worker, we have met destiny changer, we have met all kinds of names we had not met the savior the first challenge of man is sin and until sin is dealt with you are still sick hmm. you are that fire that burns within me and men think I am strong it is not it is the holy ghost Ah, hey, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, hey, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, hey, ah, yeah. Ah, hey, ah, yeah. You are that fire that burns within me, and men think I am strong. It is not ever. Oh. Is the Holy Ghost. You are that fire that burns within me, and men think I am strong. It is not a foul. Is the Holy Ghost. Ah, hey, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, hey, ah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, please look at me. There is a light.
light that does not intend to drive darkness away. There is a light that actually wants to partner with darkness. That is the moon. Although he came, it is still darkness that is the error. It is only the sun that came and removed the climate of darkness because the sun actually intends to eradicate darkness. But there is another arrangement. There is another light that is an imposter. His mission is to keep the era of darkness while there and then use darkness as a canopy to masquerade as though it's light. Why do people go to herbalists? Why do people go to witch doctors? The same challenge that witches and wizards created. Then the person will now go and look for solution with the same kingdom that created it. Because they needed to use that challenge, that darkness, as an opportunity to shine. Where did the man's challenge come from? This man that has now bought a goat to go and sacrifice to Baba. Where did the challenge come? The same kingdom of darkness. And now his feet has gone back to go and bend down before them. This is exactly the assignment of the moon. He is not intending to remove darkness. He wants to maintain partnership with darkness. So that inside that darkness, a new government is created. It can now become the face of that government. Fake fire everywhere. You speak in tongues and from tongues to masturbation. Fake fire everywhere. You go to church. You are the first person that comes to church. But you are the greatest gossiper in your compound. Fake fire everywhere. Everybody looks at you from the length of your skirt to the way you carry yourself. They say, surely these are those that are helped of the Lord. But in secret, you are a corruption, a can of worm. Fake fire everywhere. Many people holding mic and rebuking iniquity. Yet they are corrupted. The same man, the same pastor speaking, is sleeping with women in the same church. And the ladies are looking at him and they are thinking, how is it possible to be this deceived, to be this corrupted? And the man is saying, it is the mercy of fake fire everywhere. And people talk about fire. Yet the fire we have cannot put the characteristics of fire on ground. Listen, nobody explains fire. Fire explains itself. When you come near fire, there is a heat that gives you a warning that don't come closer. Before fire will burn you, you will first feel that heat. If you ignore the heat and go closer, then you will touch the flame. How comes everything we have now is in talk, 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 talk. We are talking heavy grammar, yet there are no proofs, no display. The fruits that should be an attestation of the fire you claim you are burning with is not in our life. And nobody is provoked provoke to the altar and say Lord set my soul on fire. Jesus says I came to set the earth on fire but I, I, I came to meet it already burning. What would die if I meet it burning? So there are, there are already religious activities going on. The, the chief priest was burning, burning incense. They were slaughtering doves, slaughtering sheep and they were making all kinds of physical arrangements as though they are in good tandem with God and God has moved. You pray and after prayer you put your head on the pillow and witches come and press you. Fake fire everywhere. There is a way you carry fire even though you forget to pray. You are a no-go area. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. There is a way darkness begins to talk about you and say how do we reduce this person's fire? There are people sitting here the grip of lust. Masturbation is, as, as I'm talking right now, is, is happening with the brother. Strong on his soul. Strong. He would, he would from time to time, he will use, he will use willpower and say, no. You cannot continue on that economy for long. How long would you be saying no? You will need that seed to be uprooted and there's one thing that can consume that thing from the root is fire. Allow this fire come upon your head. You will look for masturbation, you will not see it. Pornography is helplessly at the mercy of that fire. That fire can burn, it can purify, it can sanctify, it can make you new, it can purge you. Actually, it is that fire that was God's formula to unveil your glory. When you discover gold in its purest form, it will come with some corruption, it will come with some impurities. You will need to carry gold through 
fire. That purification is what brings out the true posture, the true capacity, and the true words of that substance called gold. This is the, exactly the way God releases the treasure that is covered, that is hidden in earthen vessel. Because there is something on your inside, an earthen vessel, clay, the sand, the, 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 the dust will cover it so that you don't look like who you are. But only that fire can unveil your identity. You need this fire for anything you want to do. Go into a business without fire and people will use fake fire and they will sell more than you. People will leave all the shop and they will come and stand in front of the shop. In the shop that they are living since, they are selling the same thing they want. But they didn't enter. They continue to move until somebody who went to touch fake fire somewhere will catch their attention. Because whether you are calling it fake or not, they still have capacity to shine. No matter how much you say the moon does not have any light of its own, it is still shining in the night. It is still shining. Where are the sons of light? Where are those ordained to carry the, gen the genes, the genes of their father? Because God is a consuming fire. You too, you came from that stock. When anything ungodly comes upon you, it's supposed to die. Even sickness is not from your realm. Your realm is fire. Anything that is not from that realm should not survive you. It can come. It can come. Surely they will gather. But for your sake, it will scatter. You can wake up with headache. Wake up with a symptom. That symptom should remain a symptom and vanish. Because there is fire on this altar. There is only, only anything that comes from the realm of fire. Only those things can survive me. I repeat it again. The words of a patriarch. I set myself on fire. And men gather to watch me burn. You know what men like? They like to be spectators. They like to see things happening. Set yourself on fire. You know, fire has been inviting some people. He says, come, come, come. Let's reason together. And you are saying, but if I come, all these things I have, I have designed, all these things I have planned, everything will scatter. Yes, it will need to scatter before you see the real blueprint. When fire invites you, you will think that your life will become a disadvantage but allow the fire to walk through you. There is a voice on the peak of a mount. is summoning people and say, come up here, come. Come! Because there are those who must yield to a higher level of consecration. This night, there are those who will begin to write down their vows. Some people, the Holy Ghost is whispering to their ears now, stay away from breakfast for the rest of this year. For some people, he says, every night by 12, get up and call upon my name. There are different ways to put firewood in this your fire. There are many dead prayer life that the Holy Ghost is intentional about waking it up tonight. But you know, you cannot stand, you cannot set yourself on fire. Hi. Oh that, oh, oh that, oh that, oh that you set us on fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Oh. Holy fire. Burn upon my altar. Ha. Holy fire. Holy fire. Oh. Ha. Holy fire. Burn upon my altar. Holy fire. Holy fire. Oh. about to pray. Before we pray, you, you need to hold something. Let me show you something to hold. Look at me, everybody. Look at me. Is there any sickness in your body? That is darkness. Just look at your life. If there is any sickness, that is darkness there. 
today the first thing that will create a quantum change the first miracle you will observe the capacity of fire to produce lights even before I pray for people you will see sicknesses sicknesses will escape because fire, fire, fire has entered that altar everywhere the serpent is hiding inside your destiny just set that altar on fire the snakes will run away are you experiencing delay that is darkness there go for fire and you will have light are you barren trusting God for a visitation the fruit of the womb that is darkness today light comes Darkness is anything that is outside the will of God. Darkness is anything outside the program of God for your life. Go ahead and pray. Holy Ghost, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Five minutes five minutes I don't know what you want to do if you like if you like be quiet if you like be silent over your destiny you have five minutes you have five minutes to throw yourself into fire Yes, of the tabernacle. 
is calling you. Oh, oh my God. He's calling. He's calling you. Oh, oh. oh my God. He's calling. What's that? He's talking. Let's get it on. What can he say? What can he talk about? Did they ever go? I did they go there? What's the name? Oh my God! He's called. He is I said, 
sicknesses. You walked in here with one infirmity or another. One pain in your body or another. One blood issue or another. One sickness or another. In the name of Jesus sickness out in Jesus name. I set your bodies on fire for Jesus. Let holy fire fall upon you now. Let holy fire fall upon you now. Let holy fire fall upon you now. Everybody here who have been knocking on some doors, doors that have refused to open, please, ushers, bring, 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 don't take them outside. Bring them out, bring them forward. I need to lay my hands on them. Everybody who have been knocking on some doors, that has refused to open hear me now in the name of Jesus Christ I command doors to your next season be opened in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to prophets prophets, prophets prophets that darkness has been deployed to resist their clarity in the spirit. Let divine fire come upon you now. I set your altar on fire. I set your altar on fire. I 
I come against champs. I come against incantation. I come against amulets. I come against divination. I come against every conjurance against you from covens, from witchcraft. Every plot against your destiny. We scatter it now in the name of Jesus Christ. themselves writing an exam in the dream. Exam that they could not submit. Exam that the invigilator took everybody's answer sheet except their own. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I shift you into your next season by fire. I shift you into your next season by fire. Everybody here and those online that continue to see dreams of themselves trying to run trying to gain speed but their legs are too heavy in that dream and somehow they are not running as fast as they wanted to run I challenge the spirit of delay over your destiny and I declare upon you divine speed in the name of Jesus Christ he says I will restore the years that the canker worm has stolen Everybody here that wickedness have eaten time out of your life, out of your destiny. Now by the fire of restoration, we restore back those years in the name of Jesus Christ. There is somebody that came here. I'm using that person as a case study because there are other people that are actually aligned to this same scenario came here with a medical report and you are trusting the Lord that God God will encounter you and you will change and turn your story around now God bless you God bless you now by the power of the Holy Ghost we terminate that report now in the name of Jesus SS turn to AA now in the name of Jesus Christ I silence the spirit of accusation. There is a spirit accusing somebody's conscience. A spirit condemning somebody. I command those spirits be still in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing somebody. There is chain. There is chain around you. Chains around you. You have many plans, but you cannot use your time. You will be looking at time going like this. You know what you are supposed to do, but you cannot do it. You cannot use your own time. You are under attack. I command every chain of limitation, every chain of procrastination, be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a bone condition. A bone condition. I command that pain now. I command that pain. Leave their bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. God is good. He is good. He is good. He has shown us mercy. Where is that sister? Come. We are going to dance. Listen. We are going to dance before this God. In the next three minutes. Then we will take, we will take three or four testimonies. 
Pastor Ono and Pastor James, just come forward. God has touched you. You can feel the touch of God already. The things that buffeted you as you came, you can feel the sense and you can feel that wellness. God has lifted the hand of affliction from your life. Please, can you raise your hand above your head wherever you are? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need, we will take only four testimonies. Four. So, if you are here, you want to share your testimony, make your way quickly to Pastor Onu and speak with him briefly or to Pastor James quickly while we take a session of praise. Let it go, 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 let it go
in our lives and also to the spirit of prophecy meaning that if it can happen in the life of one it is possible to happen in the life of all also testimonies are a proof that you have suffered in that predicament long enough that you are not ashamed to declare in the midst of God's people what the Lord has done in your life we will be taking some testimonies very briefly, which is the last thing we are doing before we go. So please, don't, don't, I'm sorry, you know, we get to take your time. So we'll just take few testimonies, very few. And then, uh, for some, they could not come out by themselves. They were shy. So they decided to write it down. So we would probably entertain that if we have the space. Let's take, let's take two testimonies quickly, quickly. Uh, for two months I've been battling with this tooth egg that after this, after last week Friday service, Apostle declared about routine, something about routine and I took it to myself that every night I must again, I must put more effort to pray so these teeth started heavily for two months, I could not I could not do anything with it on Tuesday I went to a dentist and he he checked it up, he clean up and he, he filled it up. Wednesday, I could not sleep. Thursday, yesterday, it was so hectic. This morning, I woke up, I was feeling fever that my head all was spinning me. So, I was able to took my bath and I came for service. I came for service, I was seated back, I could not do anything because the, heart, the mouth was so heavy and my head also was just banging. So, after Apostle was declared a prayer about your head, I called your head and pray and at that, that time, I I could I could open my mouth widely and I could pray and I, everything is fine. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. If you are here and you've had toothache before, you will understand the predicament of that brother. You know, you can just be sitting down and say, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> When toothache comes on you, you will, not, you will not know what you want in life. I was traveling with one brother. My, by the way, the brother is not Pastor James. We were somewhere very far from this side of the world. Hi. I cannot tell the story. Amen. Let, let's take another testimony quickly. Thank you, Jesus. doubting God. What am I doubting him when he's speaking to me? It's well. It's well with you, sister. We pray that the mercy of God cover for the areas of your deficiencies. May God's mercy speak for you. And we declare everything the Lord has wrought in your life is permanent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that mercy grant you the favor you desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, all titles, let's run forward very quickly. Begin to package your offerings wherever you are. At most be shift now, chains be broken, break now, Holy Spirit, come now, those offerings and the tights that you're holding just speak words what are your expectations the Bible says if you give you receive bountifully we give you praise 
We worship your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can give your tithes and then you can give your offerings as the ushers move around. Amen. Let's take the following announcements. We meet here on Tuesdays by 5 p.m. for the Congress and the Communion Service. Who is excited? If you have been blessed by that meeting, can you shout glory? It's such an awesome time, you know. We use our mouths to effect changes. We use our mouths to cause changes. You know, James 5.16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. One of my favorite translations says it produces wonderful results. When you come here on Fridays and then you hear the wonderful testimonies as a result of this Congress and Communion Service, you will be amazed and that you won't want to miss these meetings. Amen. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Don't miss that meeting in the name of Jesus. Then on Fridays like this, we meet by 5 p.m. for another Anakazu experience. Who has been blessed today? such a power packed service amen and I pray that we will exude genuine fire in the name of Jesus please don't come alone, don't be selfish invite somebody to be a partaker of this wonderful service you know the Bible says that and so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed the truth is God will not come down from heaven to do this work, he expects me and you to do this work and then we are taking it to the ends of the earth and we need more laborers Will you invite somebody next week? Yes, sir. If you invite somebody next week, can I see you? Yes. Come on. Amen. Amen. Our father is going to be ministering at Harvesters for Christ ministry. Yes, yeah, celebrate Jesus. National Youth Conference starts from the 24th to the 27th of August, 2023. Our Father is going to be ministering tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And then you can look at the flyer for more information. Amen. The registration fee is 1,000 Naira. Please, if you're around, make yourself available for this um, experience. Amen. Amen. All right. Any other announcements will be passed across on our group <laughs> pages. Amen. Let's celebrate Apostle. Please, let's, let's celebrate my brother, my covenant brother, Pastor Funo. I, I and Pastor Funo have gone way back. We have been classmates since just one. Today, I am just sitting admiring the glory of God upon his life. Let's celebrate Jesus. Thank you so much. By the grace of God, tomorrow and Sunday, 5 p.m. respectively, I'll be ministering at the Harvester's headquarters uh, alongside very erudite graces like Reverend Kanda. You know, it's, 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 listen, it is, it is going to be such a marvelous visitation. Now, that 1,000 they wrote there, don't let that stop you from coming. Just come. They will not collect any money at, at the door. There's, there's no meeting that they'll say, pay before you enter. Do you understand what I'm saying? Come and be blessed. There is something God has for us tomorrow and next. The address is Banawa. That, uh, is this Stephen Shekari? Uh -huh. Just entered here. You, the place where you'll be hearing the sound from is the place. Amen. Good news. Tomorrow is workers retreat. Listen, listen. For those of you, for those of you who are allowing Satan to make you angry. I have not rested since Tuesday. I have been traveling back to back. I have been preaching. I have been ministering daily. I, I, I minister somewhere even this morning. I took a flight from 
Wari to Abuja, Abuja now to Kaduna just to catch an Akazo service and still minister this evening. Tomorrow morning I will minister at the retreat. I will still minister in the evening. On Sunday morning I will minister in a friend's place and cover for him and still minister in the evening. You, your own small, this thing, you are allowing Satan to enter your heart. Everybody, I need your attention now. I want to say something in the next one minute and we are out. But it's too important. By the grace of God. While we had so much challenge and I truly feel so bad for every of our lovely people and the overflows at the back there and beside the hall, especially when the rain comes, my heart breaks immediately. But we have tried and there is nothing, you know, practically possible to do to salvage that situation at the moment. While we are making every necessary effort to build our own cathedral as a long-term project, the Lord has given us a short-term initiative to put in place to make sure that such a narrative does not bedevil our people in the subsequent seasons ahead. The next season is the Hamatan, which is also going to be a very cold season. I feel for everybody, so we are making plans by the grace of God. And because of matters like this, it has informed the decision to migrate to a bigger hall. <laughs> So we will be moving to a bigger hall that can at least carry at least 2,000 people. And so, amen, amen. All plans are on ground and we have commenced labor already. The location of the hall The hall is located in Banawa. Listen, we have, we have searched for spaces that can carry the kind of, uh, you know, population we we'll envisage, and we don't have such around this space. The closest place in Kaduna South that can host that thing is that hall at Banawa. And it's not deep, deep into Banawa. It's just by... Don't worry. When the season comes, you'll see the address. Now, um, Anakazo will not stop here. Here we'll continue. We're only going to open another central location. So by the grace of God, this meeting here will become a Sunday contact. And then... <laughs> Amen. This meeting here will be a Sunday evening gathering. Then the Friday is where we converge at Banawa. There are many people trying to locate us. A lot of calls, a lot of mails, day in, day out, about the location of our meeting. And I believe that once we shift to that space, it will be the beginning of a new season. I, I call on every one of us to make ourselves available and to join hands together to put that new hall in shape. The plan is to resume that hall on the 5th of January. That's where we will resume that hall. So, but from then, from now till then, we are putting all structures in place to make sure everything in that hall is excellently, you know, um, um, put in place. We don't intend to take any sound from here, anything from here, everything there will be acquired so that the meeting in this place can continue. And so by the grace of God, um, while we are laboring to make that a reality, I want to pray for every one of us. May the Lord shift you into new seasons. May the Lord multiply the fruits of your hand. May the Lord increase you on all sides. May the Lord bless your going out and your coming in. May the Lord prosper you in all you put your hands to do. Shortly, we would be making the process of our new venue open for everybody as the Lord lays in your heart please make sure you partner with what we are about to do in Banawa it is going to be a very excellent cathedral of worship that we are setting up 
Uh, we are trusting the Lord to solve many of the challenges we actually currently face in this place. All of this matter of heat, you know, and the matter of the space. We, we want to have air conditions, you know, in the meetings. We want to have an excellent sound. We want to have, in every ramification, we want to trust God for a place that is befitting of kings and priests. So by the grace of God, that's what we are working on. I speak to businesses, businesses, everybody here connected to one business or another. I put the oil of gladness upon your head now. I declare that your business begin to blossom now. I put upon you the desire of nations. Let the heart of men begin to gravitate towards your business. You will not be ignored again. You will not be ignored again. Amen. I pull resources to your business now. Amen. I speak to everybody who have submitted one application or another for a contract. I put favor upon your submission now. Amen. I begin to trouble the hearts of kings until they favor you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Go into your week and prosper. God bless you. You provide the fire I provide the sacrifice oh, You provide the spirit I will open up the side you gotta take it. Say so you provide the fire. You provide the fire.